living on the sea. It sounds like a life of adventure and fun. But for one family who found themselves stranded in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with a sick child, their family adventure turned into a national flashpoint. And they aren't alone. There are others living their lives away from the safety of the shores. ABC's Rena Ninen hops on board with one set of aquatic parents and kids. Yeah. On deck, this might look like a fun family vacation. But below deck, severely cramped quarters for this family of five. But it's home for Carl and Carly Zaniboni. Good job. Who 10 months ago sold everything they had to live at sea with their three young children. We always sat down and, and said, this is not really the way we want to raise our kids. Let's go, you ready? And so this plan was not pretty much for us. It's, it's kind of more for them. They've stocked their boat with everything, food, tools, even duct tape. I've seen a lot of movies like where MacGyver saves everything with duct tape, so I've got it. <laughs> Carl and Carly say they're prepared for whatever Mother Nature sends their way. At arm's reach, jugs of suntan lotion, a trauma ward style medical kit. CPR, fractures, burns, wound, bleeding. And a state-of-the-art communication system. Since I'm going to be helping you sail yes. this, you don't happen to have cruise control, do you? Yes, we do. That's where we're going to be going today. Okay. All right, you're sailing. Mother Nature can do fierce, fierce things. I mean, yeah, we live on the water, but who's to say we're any worse from people who live in New Orleans for the hurricanes or Kansas for the tornadoes? Many question why families like theirs choose to live at sea with their young kids, especially after another family's harrowing ordeal ignited a fierce national debate over parenting at sea. So many questions this morning, George. This rescue was as harrowing as they come. High seas, howling winds, a disabled sailboat, and a sick baby girl. Eric and Charlotte Kaufman decided to cross the Pacific Ocean with their two young daughters. But 900 miles off the coast of Mexico, their youngest got sick with a fever and a rash, as they told ABC's Cecilia Vega. Our youngest daughter, Lyra, got sick on day 10, and then she starts to act lethargic. And these, when the symptoms start to compile and your baby no longer acts the way that they normally act, red flag. that's when you need to you know, do something. It got worse, they say, when their satellite phone stopped working. At that point, we had no ability any longer to um, talk to um, our physician or to the Coast Guard physician. Our daughter wasn't getting any better um, with what was prescribed for her. And um, that's when we that's when we realized that uh, we had entered a, a very, a very bad spot. The Kaufmans eventually made it aboard a Navy warship. They were forced to sink and abandon their boat, the Rebel Heart. The rescue operation cost $600,000. The word that kept coming up yeah. about your trip was the word reckless. Yeah. What do you say to that? Irresponsible, too. Irresponsible, Irresponsible was thrown yeah. around a lot, too. Yeah, yeah I mean, we disagree. Um, yeah. I think, you know, you, you said it earlier that people, I think they were reading the news and making this 10-second snap judgment, and they just assumed we grabbed a six-pack and hopped in a sailboat and like, woo, woo let's go to the South Pacific. Yeah. Um, we're both experienced sailors. We've raised our daughters on a sailboat. Um, we were very prepared. Still, many have accused the Kaufmans of being selfish and irresponsible parents. The Zanny Bonies disagree. My heart went out to them. They, they lost everything. They lost their home. It's just like your house burning down. In my mind, they did everything right because they got their kids to safety. Are they irresponsible? I wouldn't say they're irresponsible. They just live there because they want to. The Zanny Bonies say living at sea is anything but a life of danger or of luxury. Family budgets vary depending on lifestyle, but range from two to $5,000 a month. And as for safety? I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was safe. We have netting all the way around. Our gates are always locked. It's, it's pretty much a gigantic playpen. I don't think very many moms would consider a sailboat a gigantic playpen, <laughs> but you think so? I mean, to me it is. I feel safe on this boat, and, and I think the kids feel safe. If you come up here, put your life jacket on. The kids reluctantly wear life jackets on the main deck and are tethered to the boat with the harness when the family hits the high seas. Buzz, you know how it is when we go sailing? I don't care if you don't want to put it on. It's just like getting in the car. They always fight putting on a seatbelt, they fight putting on a life jacket. 
And below deck, their living space might seem cramped, but it's well designed. Bigger than most apartments in New York City. The dining room doubles as the living room. They've got storage underneath the banquettes. And there's a master suite, and each of the girls do have their own room, albeit a small one. And all over, the boat is engineered with an eye towards safety. And I like how much of your house is already baby-proofed on a sailboat, these little yes. locks here. Yes, huh? everything has great latches. You don't want your, your cups and plates flying out. Every bunk has netting, including the improvised crib for their newborn. But and this is called a lead cloth. Lead cloth. And when it comes to bath time, the kids bathe in a little bucket in the shower stall. Are there any comforts of home that you really miss? Oh, a bathtub. A bathtub. Mm -hmm. Especially when I was pregnant, I was like, I would just die for a bath right now. Do you know your ABCs? A, B, C, D, E. Life at sea means Carl and Carly are responsible for teaching their children. Their oldest is ready to learn how to read and write. L -M -A. It's no different to homeschooling on, on land, is it on a boat? No, it's not. Three dogs at a party. And while there have been many adjustments, some routines never change. This is as chaotic as any home with toddlers trying to get them bathed, teeth, vitamins, and bed. It's the greatest thing that I get to spend all day with them. Oh. And it's the hardest thing that I get to spend all day with them. And despite the challenges, they have no regrets. You're so cute. I don't want to be that person that looks back and just says that I've just worked and become a slave to the system. And, and, and not live. I want to live. And we know we'll be judged, but that's okay. Because we know in our heart we're doing what we think's right. I'm Rena Ninen for Nightline, off the coast of the Bahamas.